All right, Seamus Hickey is the acting CEO of the GPA and he joins us now to talk about the ongoing impasse with Sport Ireland about the uh, grant situation. Seamus, um, maybe you just bring us up to date on the latest communication that you guys have had with Sport Ireland. Una May was in the Irish Independent this morning saying that it was her intention to talk to you guys today. Uh, well, I suppose in the first instance I haven't heard from anything from Sport Ireland today. Uh, but um, I suppose... Where we're currently at, uh, on Wednesday night, we, we just sent out a communication to our membership. Uh, it's been an issue of, I suppose, confusion and, and uh, misunderstanding since April when the, the grant payments from Sport Ireland were due to be paid to, to, to GA players across the country. So um, we've been engaging with them fairly constantly since, uh, since uh, the beginning of this year uh, to try and... <laughs> get an understanding between the two of us on, on, uh, on where we find ourselves. Uh, but mainly uh, our point at the end, what we're trying to get across the Sport Ireland is the 2017 grants, you know, they're being withheld in, in uh, I suppose, against the, what, is, what is agreed in the UNESCO Convention for Anti-Doping in Sport, where you can only withhold funding when a body or an athlete is, in, uh, is non-compliant uh, with anti-doping con- uh, code or regulations. That cannot be the case for 2017. Uh, this addendum uh, wasn't, or this uh, d- conversation with Sport Ireland on addresses didn't start uh, until December. So that's our main our main point uh, of focus in this in this whole uh, engagement. Our players are frustrated; they don't understand uh, why uh, that funding is being withheld. Okay, and so just to, to tease it out for anybody who's going to come and late to the story, um, Dr. Una May was in the, in the paper today in a story that Duncan Boyle had in The Independent saying that uh, there was always going to be an addendum and the addendum was, um, to your agreement, and that the addendum was designed to help strengthen anti-doping in 2019 and that they've been talking to you over the last number of months about releasing players' home addresses in 2019. So we're talking about next year, um, which would be the third year of this agreement, I think, if I'm right, and that at that point... Uh, they would have access to those addresses for various anti-doping reasons. Um, what what is the problem with giving them the addresses? So I suppose the, the at this point, it's we were engaged with the conversation since December when the addendum was first posted to us about what the addendum means, how it strengthens um, the anti-doping code in uh, in GA. Uh, it was communicated last April um, that from John Tracy to the GA and ourselves that an addendum would be negotiated uh, between Sport Ireland, GA, and ourselves to strengthen anti-doping in the GA. Uh, that's what was communicated last April. Uh, in December, then, it was the first, uh, in December 18th, it was the first time we actually got any sight of that. Uh, and it was the first mention of um, the provision of addresses for our players. Um, again, uh, we looked for qualification and clarity as to what the strengthening of the anti-doping code would gain from this um, as part of our engagement with them. We, we had communications with them in January and February. Uh, we also had a face-to-face in, in, in April. Um, again, though, the, at no point did we, did we foresee that 2017's grant payments would be affected by this. We didn't feel that, you know, that at any stage that we were non-compliant with the very strict anti-doping uh, codes that we already are compliant with as GA players. We're tested in and out of competition they have our whereabouts three or four times a week um, in terms of our training sessions. We are, all county boards are, are mandated to communicate our whereabouts as players. They know where we are um, and we, we comply and we have been compliant. Uh, the GPA supported the introduction of blood testing in 2016 because we felt it was for the betterment of um, the clean sport agenda in the GAA. We were very supportive of that. We've always been pretty strong on our advocacy for that. Uh, as part of what we thought was a negotiation process with Sport Ireland, uh, we questioned the clarif- uh, looking for clarity as to how this uh, wasn't already contained within the anti-doping uh, uh, code that's already there. Um, uh, we didn't get any meaningful clarity or, or engagement on those. Um, it has very, very much been uh, submit addresses or, or, or nothing. So no, no explanation for why they want the addresses? So for anti-doping purposes is is what is what the explanation we were given. And is that is that uh, like is it as formal as that? It's it's like is it written down or is it not a chat? Like um, Una, why do you want these addresses? Why do you need them? And she goes, well, so we need is, them for this, this, and this. this and you go, part, okay, that this makes is sense. Part of the jury, yeah, no, like, so we we've requested a meeting multiple times in the last number of weeks, um, and again, it's 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 what we've gotten is 
Um, there's the addendum. Um, come up with some version of the addendum where you share addresses that's comfortable for you. We can't do that, uh, especially with our players at the moment. The frustration levels and the misunderstanding that they have, um, there's been no sort of engagement with them about what the benefits of, of providing addresses could be. Um, you know, the, the conversation has been about uh, why, I, why are the grants been withheld uh, and are we non-compliant? The, the answer is no. Okay, uh, two things strike me from the situation that as a complete outsider, they should pay the grants for 2017 because you did what you were supposed to do in, in 2017. From, from this point forward, they should say, you can't have any more unless we get your addresses and this is why we need the addresses and then have the explanation about why. And part of that might be that there could be an introduction of um, uh, testing. Now, she says that's not part of their plans, that they, they won't test at home, that that's not part of their structure, but that they need it for, for other reasons. So if on post intercept a parcel of illegal drugs for somebody's address and then that gets reported to the anti-doping authorities and it's found to say, say EPO, because this, this is a real thing that has happened before. Somebody was getting EPO shipped to their home address, stupidly, and on post intercepted it. They went to the anti-doping agency. The anti-doping agency intercepted the package the next time one was coming and found that that person had EPO, which like, so seems legitimate. This was, this was part of the conversation we had at the face-to-face -face with them in April. Um, was the qualification about the intelligence purposes for addresses. And when we pressed them then to say, was it, does that discount testing at home? They said it can't, and it doesn't. That testing at home remains part of it. So like the, the, the concept of intelligent purposes, again, with GDPR, I don't see how any supplier can provide uh, personal information without uh, divulge or breaking those uh, those codes that have come in since the 25th of May. So you're, you're relying on Whistleblowers, you're relying. Oh, we don't understand what the like. What are you relying on? That you're on relying post, on on post. Take a look at it. Or it's it's on post in customs finding it. That's that's what that is. In, in that example, that's a real example of, of EPO that was intercepted. Um, I, I, like, are you? Is it again? Is the is the sticking point really about the testing at home from the uh, GPA's perspective? Well, the, the sticking point here is that progress really can't be made until the. The grant payments that have been withheld, but it, that's the sticking point. We've, we've been trying to engage with Sport Ireland. We've, since December, since the addendum has come up, we have written to them with, so looking for a clarification as to what uh, the provision of addresses would mean, what, uh, what anti-doping purposes means, uh, how um, the addresses for intelligence, how that would actually work and strengthen the sport. So again, we've been looking for these answers and we've been held at arm's length basically since uh, since December uh, without any good answers on that. So we have engaged and we, the reason we're looking for a meeting is that, you know, with the provision of the of the grants that are been that are that aren't that aren't being paid, there is there can be a meaningful conversation going forward about how we strengthen anti doping. Because you, you don't trust them because they haven't paid you what they owe you. Because they're, it's completely unjustified about what they're doing. So it's that's not how you negotiate. And in our in our view, that's that's not that's not a viable way to do and it. I think anybody who's watching the situation thinks you guys have a fair point on that. If if we were to park that for a minute and say that those grants do get paid, at that point, are you open to going to your members and saying, look, we've had a, a proper conversation, and there's a strong likelihood that if we want to continue getting grants, then we're going to have to do the same thing which all of the other sports who get grants do, which is include home addresses for testing at home and also for intelligence purposes. We're, we're a members representative body. We will always engage with our members about what they feel on an, any number of topics. So this would be no different. So that our engagement with Sport Ireland is in good faith. And anything that comes out of that engagement, we would go to the players to see their take on it and we would represent them accordingly. So, and I think in the conversation in April with Sport Ireland, this, this was mentioned that we were willing to engage with our players to, to with valid and clear reasoning as to why these things were required of them outside of what they're already committed to as part of the anti-doping policy. We, we, already, we already are compliant with a very strict process. Our whereabouts and, and our in and out of competition testing are established. I get that. And if you're going to add to the existing uh, anti-doping code for the GAA, give us the reasons for it, how it's going to improve anti-doping, or are you just adding something to it for the aesthetic of improving it? Well, like, 
I mean, that's a fair enough, and that's a, an important conversation. We just heard from Colin Griffin, the uh, Olympic race walker, who was active on Twitter today, pointing out that if you're an Olympic athlete, your whereabouts are known. It's a bit of a pain in the ass at the start to get used to, but you do it because it helps to increase the credibility in the sport. And Absolutely, I think and he's part of a registered testing group. So at- athletics and cycling are, are part of an RTP, so Sport Ireland have a registered testing pool for athletes that have to report their whereabouts regularly and in the, in the case of Olympic athletes, number of times a week, uh, morning or evening. Uh, team sports, GAA, is, a no, is not a re- high-risk sport. John Tracy is on record as saying that in July of 2017. GAA is not considered a high-risk sport. We've, been had, we've had drug testing in GAA since 2001, and we've had two positive cases. Um, GAA is not a high-risk sport, therefore it, it cannot be brought into this hybrid pool where... Uh, our, our whereabouts are registered, they're not registered. We're either a part of the RTP or we're not. Uh, and we're because we're not a high-risk sport, we, we are not on the same... Um, we don't have the same requirements of, it, of athletics or cycling, which are considered. And so, you, like, at some point, though, people are going to go, if you want the government grants, you're going to have to have the same criteria as the other sports. And, and whether or not it's high-risk or low-risk, ultimately... I think we'd all really understand that we're trending towards a, a point where 16 and 17 year olds are going to have much more access to this than previous generations and it's harder for them to turn it down because uh, the rewards are more and the access is more and the acceptance in society seems to be a good bit more as well. So like, you wouldn't want to get to a point where GA slips accidentally into high risk. And this, is, and this is again, this has again been part of the conversation we've had with Sport Ireland. We have always been willing to engage with them. but. On the terms that they have set out, it has been impossible. Um, when we've basically requested um, the decoupling of 2017 grants from the conversation on addendum that applies to 2018 and 2019, you know the current season is already under underway. The application process for grants won't won't open uh, until the season ends. There's players retired up and down the country. One of my best friends in in, in the Limerick hurling scene retired is waiting for his grant. Will never be affected by this uh, addendum. Uh, as an inter-county player and you know he's he's completely unaffected by anything going forward and that is the fundamental problem that we have is that how can you negotiate uh, with those terms with a very unhappy group of people who you're supposed to represent. Was the addendum agreed in, in April 2017 or 2018? So sorry Joe. The addendum because, yeah just the, the order in which this, that happened because I think that's kind of it's a bit, it's a bit confusing Una May basically in the papers this morning was saying, but sure, we, we said the grants were always going to be linked to this addendum, and now that we've got into the meat of the addendum, they don't want to know about it. That was the implication I got. So now. again, so that was misleading, right? So, and again, what I, what I repeat, what I, I'll repeat what I said earlier. So notification of an addendum was given in April 2017 to be negotiated between the GAA and the GPA. No contents contained therein. And did, sorry, uh, can I just ask, did that stipulate that unless this addendum is agreed, grants won't be paid? No, well, as in it wasn't. So, in, in terms of for the twenty seventeen season, it, it absolutely was not. Uh, this is this was for twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. Right. So you'd assume uh, that, like, in good faith, those grants weren't actually really in play at any point. That's so. That's, that's our understanding that the the grants for twenty seventeen were never in play. Right. But well, this is all a but bit of a mess, again, isn't it? Again, this is this is the clarification that we've that we've tried to get from Sport Ireland, and this is the premise that we are all already operating on. Okay. Um, we feel that that is, uh, you know, unjustifiably withheld. Yeah. All right. Look, I, I can only I can only imagine how frustrating it is for everybody involved in this that we end up in this kind of nuanced argument about stuff when actually, uh, you know, real meaningful it's, money. It's in no one's interest, and and I've said this to Una May directly, and, and she has reciprocated. It is in no one's interest that we are in conflict. Like the communication to our membership was to try and uh, uh, kind of allay their misunderstanding, confusion, and frustration uh, to tell them where what was going on, what we had tried to do with Sport Ireland, and what the implications of it were. It is nobody's interest, and this is the conversation that we've been having since the, the very beginning of the year, that that the clean sport agenda is is questioned. We are committed to it, uh, and we will always be, because we are actively, the games at the weekend, there will be testing. I'll be possibly tested tomorrow. I don't know whether it's targeted or not. But, you know, it's this is 
this is ongoing and that's that's how GA players feel about it and that's what the representative group is trying to is trying to communicate. Fair play. Look, Seamus and I understand that obviously the week of a match is not the uh, thing that you want to be focused on so thanks very much for making the time to talk to us and best of luck at the weekend. Cheers. Cheers, Joe. Appreciate it.